In today's video, I'm gonna share with you four of my family's favorite Crock-Pot meals. and welcome back to my channel. I just wanna pop in really quickly and have a face-to-face -face chat with you guys and let you know what to expect in this video. I am going to be sharing with you, like I said, four crock pot recipes that our family loves, that we actually eat, that are easy and budget friendly. First up for soup, I'm gonna show you guys cabbage roll soup. You can make this on the stove top or the crock pot, whichever is easiest for you guys. I'm also gonna show you the tried and tested ravioli lasagna that you've probably seen all over YouTube and Pinterest, but it is delicious. So that's what I'm sharing with you guys. I'm gonna show you my chicken and gravy. So, so good, you guys. Do this for Thanksgiving, throw a box of stuffing mix on top, and you can call it done. And the last one that I'm gonna show you guys is beef and broccoli. This is a tasty recipe. You would have also seen it on Jessica O'Donoghue if you guys are following her. And it's just one of those really good takeout dupes for beef and broccoli. And if you guys are into that, absolutely stick around because those four recipes are coming at you right now. All right, so the first recipe I'm sharing with you is my chicken and gravy. Now there are lots of these on Pinterest or chicken and dumplings, but I will leave my recipe in the description box down below for you. First, I'm starting with two packages of chicken gravy, which I will mix per the directions in my crock pot. Now I'm mixing everything right in the crock pot. If you wanted to do it separately and then pour it over your chicken, you could absolutely do that. I'm just about less dishes. Now I'm also gonna combine a can of cream of chicken soup and whisk it together until it mixed up well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and season this. You don't wanna add any salt. There's certainly enough salt in the cream of chicken soup. I do add a lot of pepper though. That's just the way my family likes everything seasoned. I went ahead and added a good portion of boneless skinless chicken thighs mixed with chicken breasts, just because I like the combination of the dark and the white meat. I added a little bit of garlic powder to the chicken breast, and I'm gonna cook this on high for about four hours. what it looks like at about the three and a half hour mark. It is very thin as you can see, but it is ready to be broken up. So I'm gonna go ahead and thicken it up with a slurry of flour and water. It's just equal parts flour and equal parts water. And I'll slowly stream it in while whisking or using a fork to mix it up and it will start to thicken fairly quickly. So just keep an eye on it. I've made gravy a lot and it's kind of my thing. So I know that I'm gonna use all of this and I end up pouring it all in and the thickness is perfect. But you guys, this chicken was so tender. It was literally falling apart and I was able to mash it up with a whisk. All right, so we're gonna serve this up with some mashed potatoes. Now, if you're new to my channel, I love cooking my potatoes in my Instant Pot, or I should say my Ninja Foodie. If you have an Instant Pot, use that. I use half a cup of liquid, cook it on high pressure for eight minutes with a quick release. Super basic, you guys. We mash our potatoes with butter, milk, and lots and lots of ground black pepper. It's just the way we like them. I think my potatoes might even be a little spicy. And 
here you go, you guys. It ain't fancy, at least not in my house. I'm gonna scoop up some nice, delicious mashed potatoes and spoon on top the most delicious chicken gravy you will ever put in your mouth. This, I almost guarantee you, because maybe you have different tastes than me, but I'm telling you, it is so, so good. I really, really hope, if nothing else, you guys try this recipe. All right, as promised at the beginning, here is the tasty or Jessica O'Donoghue beef and broccoli recipe. Now I have some packages of beef that I did buy at my local grocery store. I'm gonna end up using two of them. I wasn't sure if I was gonna use more. I have some pre-cut broccoli that I bought. This is really the lazy man's way to do this because frankly, if I'm doing it in a crock pot, I probably want it quick and easy. I'm gonna use some sesame oil, a can of beef broth, some fresh minced garlic, some soy sauce and some brown sugar. Now, the one thing I will say about this, I would have added almost double the amount of sugar because personally, I love it really, really sweet. Okay, so first thing I wanna say, my crock pot's not dirty, you guys. It's just well-loved. I'm gonna go ahead and add all of the ingredients. I'm adding the soy sauce, the beef broth. I'm gonna add some sesame oil. Like I said, everything's gonna be linked down below. Now, some things I did more to Jessica than I did Tasty. So if you wanna check her video out, I will link that as well. Now there's the brown sugar. Like I said, I would probably add a substantial more amount, like another quarter cup or something. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and mince some fresh garlic. I found this container of peeled uh, garlic and I am in love with it. I don't know that I will ever buy garlic any other way. I'm gonna go ahead and whisk all of this together. Now in Jessica's video, she did add ginger. That's not something that we're a huge fan of in this house. I might have added like maybe a quarter of a teaspoon, but I didn't end up adding any at all. So I'm just gonna add all of my sliced up beef right into the crock pot and just kind of smush it down, that's a technical term, and make sure that it's all being hugged by this delicious sauce mixture. This one cooks on high for about four hours, but check your crock pot, mine cooks super high. So whenever it says four hours, it's usually two and a half or three. So I checked it at three and it was pretty well done. At that point, I decided it was lacking something and I needed a little bit of color. So I went ahead and added about half of a red pepper just before I go ahead and add my broccoli and my cornstarch slurry. Okay, so now like the potatoes, I wanna show you about making rice in your pressure cooker, your Instant Pot or your foodie. It is one and a quarter cups water to one cup of rice. Two minutes on high pressure with a 10 minute natural release. I share this in all of my what's for dinners. I always share it step by step because it's just something that I really believe in. It works amazingly. It's always fluffy. If you want it a little less sticky or more sticky, you could adjust the water measurements, but you guys, this is just nice, simple white rice. It is now time to go ahead and thicken up this beef and broccoli because obviously it's super liquidy at the moment. And all you're gonna do, you guys, is you combine, again, same with the flour slurry, this is a cornstarch slurry, is you're gonna mix equal parts cornstarch and water. I like to use warm water just to help speed up the mixing of the cornstarch, but go ahead and pour that all in and then just stir it up. All I used was two tablespoons of cornstarch and two tablespoons of water.
Once I get that all combined and I see that it's starting to thicken, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my broccoli. Like I said, you could use frozen, that would work as well. Um, it would probably thin out your broth a little bit, but would still be delicious. Here you'll see, I'm just making sure that it all combined really well and I was noticing it was a little bit thicker than I'd want and it's not even that it was thicker, it's just that I tried to cram a lot of broccoli in here. So I just added some hot water to thin it out a little bit but you're gonna see that broccoli is gonna wilt down really quickly and really, really nicely. Take a look at this, you guys. It is so exciting when I see this because I know how absolutely stinking delicious it is. It's so tender. That beef literally melted in our mouths. The broccoli was just right. Like I said, I added the last 30 minutes because I don't want it to be super, super soggy. I'm just gonna spoon it over some of that delicious white rice and dinner is served, you guys. The third meal that I'm gonna share with you guys is my cabbage roll soup. Now this is a go-to for me because I absolutely love cabbage rolls. Leave a comment down below if you guys love cabbage rolls. So basically, if I'm too lazy to make them, this is my go-to. Throw it all in a pot and turn it into a soup. I kind of do that with potatoes and stuff too. Loaded potato soup, seafood chowder, all the things I don't wanna take the time to cook. All right, so for this recipe, I'm using my Ninja Foodi as a slow cooker option. If you guys don't have one, I keep telling you run out and get it because I can do so, so much with it. I like to use it for soups because my slow cooker tends to burn a little bit, whereas my Foodi never ever burns anything. So all I've done so far is threw two tablespoons of butter in uh, my Foodi on the saute function and went ahead and just uh, loosened up some onions probably for about five minutes till they started to get translucent and I'm adding about a pound of ground beef now you could add ground pork sausage anything that you would stuff in your cabbage rolls go for it I know a lot of people like to do mixtures of pork and beef or pork and chicken it's totally up to you now I'm also using a flathead cabbage here which I just find a little bit easier to chop up and I'm chopping it into bite size pieces I'm gonna season this up again I will leave all of the measurements down below with some cumin, some thyme, Italian seasonings, and some paprika. I'm also adding, now what you saw there was a can of Clamato juice. The big thing is that when I make this, I like to use tomato juice or V8 juice. But I didn't have any, so I added Clamato. I'm gonna add a can of tomatoes, about four packets of beef and chicken broth, about three quarter cup of rice, and as much cabbage as I can stuff until it is full. Because if you guys know anything about cabbage, it's going to wilt down and it will cook in and don't worry about it, there's lots of room. All I'm doing is pouring in some water because I added the beef and chicken bouillon uh, seasoning right inside. And I decided to add a can of green beans just because I thought it looked nice and well, it just felt festive. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir it up until it's all combined. Now the length of time that you cook this really doesn't matter. You could leave this all day in the morning and it would be delicious in the evening. I ended up cooking mine for about six hours on high. Like I said, this Ninja Foodi, the slow cooker in it, doesn't cook overly hot or burn anything, so it's usually pretty safe to cook it on high for a lengthy amount of time. But just take a look at this, you guys. <laughs> Eating this with a piece of bread and butter is literally I mean, the definition of comfort food. I just can't think of anything else that's more delicious. It is so, so good. You could add more salt. Now I will say I ended up adding about two more cups of liquid to this throughout the cooking process, just to make sure that it had more of a soup uh, consistency than a stew consistency. So do you guys like my little bowl cozy here? My mom, a friend of my mom sews these and sells them. They're really nice when you're eating a hot bowl of soup, but here it is, you guys so delicious. I'm telling you, there isn't even any left in my fridge and we always have leftovers.
And here it is, the fourth, final, tried, tested, and true classic ravioli lasagna. Now I am using fresh ravioli, like I said at the beginning, you could absolutely use frozen. And I'm gonna try and use up some cheeses that are in my fridge, like the Parmesan and ricotta, although ignore the ricotta, because when I took the lid off, it was a little moldy. And I am showing you my brand new cheese grater. It is the same or similar to that that Mandy from Mandy in the Making uses. And I ordered mine off Amazon. I did show this in my What's For Dinner, but I wanna show you guys again. Bottom line, guys, uh, I'm having a lot of issues with kind of arthritic pain in my hands, and it's really hard for me to grate cheese right now. So this just makes life so easy. You saw how easy it was for me to lock it in place with one hand. All you do is feed the cheese through a very easy hand crank, and it just comes out so easy. And I'm gonna break it down for you in a minute and show you just how simply you can take it apart and pop it in your dishwasher. And no, this isn't sponsored. I don't have any links that I earn any commission off of this from. I just really love it and I think you guys need to have this in your life. I don't like unnecessary contraptions in the kitchen that are too many parts to clean and frankly are more complicated to use than just a simple tool. But in my opinion, this is definitely a good tool, especially, especially, especially if you have any issues with your hands or cramps or anything like that. Absolutely give it a go. I'm sure your kids would love to shred cheese with this. So like I said, look at how easy this comes apart, except this third part you're gonna notice, I fight for a second, but that's because I'm an idiot and I tried to push it out the wrong way. So it's now time to assemble our lasagna. The first thing I wanna do is spray my crock pot. You will be glad you did if you have one like me because mine sticks, everything burns. I'm just gonna add about a quarter cup of sauce to the very bottom, just like you would any other lasagna, guys, just to kind of lay your first layer of noodles on top of. So the only thing I will say, if you're using frozen lasagna, this is probably gonna take more like four hours, whereas with me using fresh, it took about two and a half to three hours. So for my layers I'm doing sauce and then I'm doing the pasta with a little sprinkling of Italian seasoning and some Parmesan cheese just from the refrigerator and then another drizzle of sauce we aren't huge sauce people guys so one whole jar for this entire lasagna was more than sufficient then I'm gonna hit it with some more cheese and then I'm just gonna continue the layers until I have three layers all together now I'm gonna I usually put more substantial amount of sauce right in the center of my ravioli lasagna because I feel like it heats and it kind of helps cook everything around it and creates like a steam. I don't know. My ra my reasoning isn't always rational, but it makes sense in my brain, so I just go with it. I'm gonna go ahead and layer another substantial amount of pasta on the very top. You don't want them to be on top of each other, but I squeeze them together pretty tightly and a very small amount of sauce for us on top. That's just how we like it because I like it to get a little bit crispy. And then I'm gonna put a very light amount of cheese while it's cooking. And then we're gonna top it off again with a ton more cheese. So like I said, I'm gonna set this. Mine only allows me to do four, but I'm gonna check it at about two hours. Honestly, this looks amazing already, but I remembered I had this jalapeno Monterey Jack cheese that I had got on my latest Costco haul, and I decided to go ahead and shred some up and throw it on top, and I am so stinking glad I did, you guys. This was so, so good. Now, I am making a point of making sure some of this cheese hits the side of my crock pot because I love those little crispy bits of cheese when you're making it in the oven, and it kind of replicates if you do it like that in the crock pot. Now, you'll see when I took the lid off, I tried to pull it away as quick as I could because you don't want any of the condensation to drip down. You can always throw a towel on there if you'd like, but I've never really found it necessary. And I just topped it up with a little bit of parsley. <laughs> My favorite 
favorite part about this recipe is I can throw it on in the morning and we can have it for lunch, or I can throw it on at lunch and we can have it for supper. And there you have it, you guys, four of our favorite crock pot recipes. If you try any of these, please take a second to tag me on Instagram and let me know what you thought. I hope you enjoyed this, you guys. Take care, and I'll see all of you in my next video. Bye for now.